scanning for audio. Hello. Welcome to another Tin Dog podcast. This is going to be an immediate reaction one, just like last week's was. Because let's face it, there's a few things that I didn't really cover. I spent a lot of time talking about the exciting world of Russell T and the way that things have evolved over the years and basically the reintroduction of, well, this. Oh, this. These? Well, these are Mickey Mouse ears because obviously Disney is now in charge of Doctor Who and I just wanted to join in. No, really, I did. Yeah, let's not do this, shall we? Right. We've just watched Wild Blue Yonder. There's a lot of people out there going to have a go at the effects. The way that everything just looked like it was shot on green screen. And then it could have been shot during, say, the pandemic. Well, fair enough. But you know what? We're Doctor Who fans. We've been putting up with dodgy effects for longer than you've been alive and longer than I've been alive. And what we're here for is the story. We're not here for the dodgy effects because we're here for that. But perhaps... Perhaps people aren't going to kick off about that. Perhaps people are going to embrace the fact that this just felt weird. It's a two... It's a... See, it's not a bottle episode. People will say it's a bottle episode, but it's not. Small cast, I'll grant you that. A lot of green screen, I'll grant you that. But a bottle episode requires you to just reuse scripts that already exist. No locations that already exist and that's not what this is because they're not using pre-existing sets they've had to build these things so that's not what it is yeah there were some dodgy effects but if if a creature was going to grow and become all john carpenter's thing about you that's what it's going to look like it's going to be all lumpy perhaps it would have worked better on audio yeah Perhaps that's it. The salt business actually felt like it was going somewhere. And, all right, all right, the next time trailer, we absolutely 100% now know, and I'll put my hands up and say, yes, it's the toy maker. Which makes less sense, but that's fine. At the very end, my wife turned to me and she just went, when she saw... Wilf. Because she knows he's no longer with us. He's dead. Sorry, I can't stand the no longer with us thing. And I went, I just turned to her and I said, it's all right. They filmed this a very long time ago. Who out there cannot say they had an instant reaction to Bernard turning up and just went, because we did. We just all went, Oh God, Bernard's back. See, what's happened? I've skipped the whole episode. I've skipped taking it apart. I've skipped using the Jeffrey tubes. I've skipped talking about the robot because I just want to go, yeah, that was definitely an episode that we got through. 42 was action-based, had stuff happening, and it was all about getting from one end of a spaceship to another end of the spaceship and stuff happened. And that was not... <sighs> I don't want to be down on Doctor Who. Last week's episode was brilliant, but it was a remake of something from 1980. This week's episode was just... there. And yeah, the Doctor... Oh, whoa, there's some things we need to unpack. Sorry. Like I said, I've just watched it. Flux definitely happened. Um, the universe... Something happened and a timeless child definitely happened. Yay! Things designed just to wind up fans. Another thing that people are going to jump on this week is someone defining somebody's gender from a skeleton. That well-known popular meme that's just wound up a thousand people. Great! Yay! Oh God, I can imagine Twitter next week. Oh God, it's going to be awful. Right. Let's not go down that road, because it's literally 100% not important. What is important is that we had a two-part thing. All right. Donna is great. Catherine Tate's brilliant, but every so often she channels Gran, and she did it a few times here. Oh, 
and it just grates a bit. Would you not have preferred an ending where the TARDIS goes, actually, no, that's the right Donna, not that one? Or was this just a bit of conflict that was built into the plot in order to build the tension? Uh, I don't know. Look, perhaps I'll enjoy it a lot more when I watch it again, because you know I will. But I'll probably just watch it the one more time, and it'll be one that I don't really get round to watching again. Because, yeah, it felt a bit like Event Horizon, and yet... You could see that the money had gone on this lovely green screen computer generated background thing and a golf cart and a water computer. But the whole thing could have been 25 minutes long and that's all right. So is it more like that very early episode inside the spaceship that, you know, the one where Susan... Well, let's not do spoilers. You can actually watch that one on iPlayer. Look, it was all right. It was genuinely all right, but it was all right. It's as if there's a beginning, which was the Meep greatness. You've got the Toy Maker, which is down to be great. And then you've got this one, which is down to be the middle episode. And you did feel for the TARDIS exploding. And you did feel for the whole, right, the TARDIS is gone. The sonic screwdriver. We will now take the sonic screwdriver and we will shove it in the lock and then they've both gone, buggered off because the doctor needs to solve something without his magic wand. Yeah? That's fine. I can live with that. In fact, I actually like that. There's a nice thing about the sixth doctor's time where he was solving things without the sonic screwdriver and that was good. But they have to go out of their way to make a point of saying he's not got it. Look, I'll come back, and I'll probably come back after all three of the specials have been on, and do a proper roundup where I deal with the things that I completely forgot to mention. Because, like I said, this is just an immediate reaction. And the immediate reaction is, that was definitely an episode that was on TV. And I've got such respect for everyone who's working on it. But, uh, I'm sorry... Everybody else in the house seemed to love it. Perhaps it's just me. I don't know. Oh, I'm scared to look at the internet. And that is what it's like being a Doctor Who fan. Because you know, as far as I'm concerned, they will have loved it. They will all go, oh my God, we had a brilliant time. The characterisation was marvellous, which it was. The acting was brilliant, which it was. Some of the effects looked ropey. Hey, they've always looked ropey. And we're all right with that. So you know what? All hail to the new chief. Until next time, be seeing you. That was the Tin Dog Podcast. Everything discussed is the intellectual property of others. No infringement is intended. For early access to reviews, follow the show on YouTube or Twitter at Tin Dog Podcast. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance.